All right. Let me make sure you got everything going. All right. The audio's good. All right. Okay. Back from the break. Hope you guys had a good break. Welcome back to PBS, your uh, public broadcasting network. Today's uh, show was funded by, uh, I don't know, I don't got any funders. Okay, um, gotta close some windows real quick, and we'll get right back to it. All right, feel free to ask questions uh, on the Facebook page. That's where everybody seems to be doing it. And we will get rocking on this. Okay, let me get my stylus. I noticed that you guys can hear me tapping on my uh, Cintiq because I had the camera right up next to it. So hopefully that won't be a bother anymore. And let's see if we got this coming through properly. All right. So I figure next, I figure we wrap up the head and then uh, call it a day. Um, because sitting here all day on a live stream, uh, you know, I wish I could do this 24 seven, but I'm not a robot and uh, I've got some prior engagements to get to later. So, all right, so where we leave off, we left off on the head here. We did that fancy thing to the line work, right? I'm gonna take that off for now and put the original line work back on. And we will doing the hair okay so there's our flesh right the hair is right there so if we take off the flesh okay we can see the hair what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the hard brush out and we'll make it pretty big all right we're gonna get the hair color and on the same layer that we laid down all of our uh, basic colors okay we're gonna Make sure that we overlap the flesh now. Well, make sure that your opacity is full. All right, there we go. Look at that. Make sure we get all the corners of the hair. Hair's the kind of the trickiest because you have all the sharp points that you got to make sure you want to cover. Um, it's really a pain in the butt when you go back to uh, erase it, but that's the hardest part, I guess. Um, all right, so we got the hair. Now we're going to get our, our magic wand out. Here, I'm gonna select it. Now I have found that I shade hair diff differently than um, anything else I shade. So we're gonna make a layer over the flesh layer, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing we did with the flesh. And we're gonna get our gradient tool. We're gonna make sure we got the hair uh, color tone right. We're gonna do the back color there, um, and then we're gonna make it a little bit darker. All right. Now, when we're doing the hair, I'm going to show you guys a trick that I use all the time if I don't like the way the color is going. And uh, I use it actually multiple times on um, all aspects of the coloring process. It's kind of like um, a cheater's little thing. So, a uh, gradient tool to fill in this new layer. I'm going to make sure we get our dark. Uh, I don't feel like that's getting dark enough, so we're going to darken up that background color and that's that's pretty decent um, we got a good shade of the light tone and dark tone all right um, some colorists what they will do is that they'll do this gradient trick here and then they'll make a layer above that and then look at their lasso tool and they'll uh, select all the areas that they want dark and then uh, after they do that and they do their shading then they'll select all the areas that they want light and then they'll do their shading there and actually we can do that real quick so I can show you guys what I'm talking about um, so here's our layer with the gradient right what we're going to do is we're going to make a layer right above that one and we got our lasso tool selected so this is what we're going to do all the parts that we want to have shadow we're going to go in here and select them all and uh, I'm going to try to do this nice and neat so you guys don't get the illusion that I'm just a sloppy painter here and um, I've seen so many artists take their time with this lasso tool and uh, I don't have the patience for that like I said before but I mean your work's only as good as how much work you put into it so this might be beneficial to you 
Um, actually, I need to select all of that. And uh, you might think this pays off rather than going through and doing everything individually like I do um, without the lasso tool and having to avoid uh, the other colors. So we're just going to go through here, do all that. All right. Let's see, this is a this is already driving me crazy because I'm spending time on it. But it must be done. It's a painful process. And you just uh, you go through and uh, mentally you just uh, figure out what parts you want shaded, and um, hold down shift the entire time. You don't let go of that button because if you do and you select off of it, you're going to lose everything you've already selected. And if you do, I'll show you. If you accidentally let go of shift and select off, you lose it all. But if you just do it at undo, control Z, it brings it right back. And then you hold down shift and keep going. Um, most important time saver of Photoshop is to learn your macro keys. Okay, because uh, you don't want to touch your mouse at all if you can help it. Um, I mean, um, I'm going to leave it alone. So, and there are thousands of macro keys. You can look up the PDF for the um, Photoshop help, and it will give you a run through. Uh, the most common ones I use is uh, like uh, Control Alt Z. Uh, of course, your standard Control C and V for copy and paste, Control U for your hue, saturation, and uh, lightness. And uh, you can set your own macros if you'd like, and the list goes on and on and on. If you uh, can memorize every single macro, you would never have to get away from your keyboard and you will be the world's best Photoshopper. So if that's the kind of goals you got for yourself for your life and everything that you do, good for you. But um, <laughs> I just, I, uh, you know, um, quantity over quality in s some aspects, you know. So, see, we're already taking a little time on this, but uh, I'll show you. You can determine and judge whether you feel like this this is worth it. And, um, and I'm not being as sharp on this as I should be, but it will cool it off just fine. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, yeah, you can see it. I noticed that you couldn't see the drop-down menus on the last video. Um, and I don't know why that is. I think it's the Google Hangout. It uh, has a problem um, showing this stuff through. But uh, I'm going to have to figure out if I have to switch to a different platform for live streaming or if there's something wrong with my Google Drive. i got to figure out in settings. So. Um, yeah, so this is uh, this is lasso tooling, um, and let's see here with a little shadow there. I actually used to do this all the time when I was a kid, and because um, I started coloring when I was uh, fourteen, and uh, my drawings back then looked terrible, but um. This is the way that I saw everybody doing it on the internet and all the pros doing it. So I just naturally picked it up thinking that I could pull it off. And people can pull this off. I'm not saying they can't. I'm not saying it looks terrible. The, you know, the industry standard, a lot of professionals do it this way. So a lot of DC Marvel artists do it this way. It's good to know. That's another thing I recommend you do. Um, if you like coloring, look. Look for your uh, heroes, you know, look for your uh, the people who inspire you and see if you can't look up how they, their techniques and whatnot. Because um, I pull techniques from everybody that I like, you know, that are the techniques that I like. And I try to uh, show the influence and in everything that I do. Um, I can't remember the guy's name who does all the coloring for J. Scott Campbell's work, but he's the one I got the idea to do the, uh, the lining. Uh, we're lightening up the lining because he does a lot of that and it just makes the uh, 
the entire image pop. And uh, I'll try to bring up some uh, pictures on here where I've got them all finished and show you guys the what it looks like when I'm done. So, all right, uh, we're almost done with this. All right, so I've got the majority of where I'm going to put my shadows, right? It looks like a big, uh, what we call the ant lines, because it looks like little ants marching in lines everywhere. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your paintbrush. Now, remember, this is on a brand new layer. There's nothing else on this layer. Uh, some people change the layer uh, filter to multiply. So let's go ahead and do that. Multiply. They don't change the opacity or anything like that. So we're going to grab our color. We're going to darken it just a little bit. doesn't have to be too much. Um, all right. And I'm going to switch the opacity down to 30. 30 is a good number. Some people can work with 50. Um, for me, that's a little too extreme. In it. And there's a lot of backtracking. But um, okay, so here we go. And you just brush over that real quick. And uh, it doesn't look like I got all the spots I wanted, right? Okay, if you can see that. Um, it looks better once you take the ant lines off of it, but I'm going to show you what else to do. We're not done with that yet. All right, so we have the opacity at 30%. What we're going to do is we're going to come through, and we're going to brush this. And uh, we're gonna, that's a little too, I got out my hard brush. Sorry about that. It's a little too firm. All right, there we go. It's got a little lighter edge to it. Um, we're going to come through. And hit these just just on the uh, not all the way in the selected area, just on the uh, the rim of it to where you want it to be. So we definitely have to darken this in here. Uh, there, all right. Now that I'm doing this, now it's like, oh man, I should try to do this more. <laughs> and perfect it because that was actually uh, uh, brings me back to the good old days, you know, the homeland. I used to sit in front of the computer and just do this constantly. And um, all right, you don't want to, you only want to fill one side of each selection that you have, or every area that you have selected, because if you fill it all in solid, you got this um, two tone dynamic. Uh, some artists use that on simpler comics, like uh, comic um, Sunday strips, you know, but um, or web comics. If you're looking for more of a refined um, novel or uh, a 22-page standard comic, this is what they do. And I'm going to fill that in just a little bit. You know, I'm actually going to have to probably lighten that from all the light hits, but I'm just going to darken this up in here. Now, if you're in the middle of coloring, right, and you see a spot that you missed with your lasso tool, go ahead and switch over your lasso, hold down shift, and uh, select it again. Like, I've got little corners in here I've missed that will make it look terrible if I don't um, grab them. So, you just go back to your paintbrush. Uh, like, right there, I missed another spot. Ran, ran through it too quick. See, when you do the lasso, you can't rush yourself. You gotta, gotta pace yourself and make sure that you uh, grab everything that you want because it's uh, it's all a matter of perfection with that thing. And I am, uh, I try to not be a perfectionist because I really want to be, but it slows me down when I'm trying to um, pump out a lot of work at a time. So, okay, so there we have. Um, the majority of the shadowing. I'm not going to say all of it because it looks like I didn't select it all, but I'm going to show you what this has done and uh, see how we've got most of the areas where we'd like for it to be shadowed. And it's got a really clean look on, on one edge and then it's soft on the other. Okay. Um, that's good if you like that. But what I'll show you what I do. I just go through here with the brush and I follow my lines in the hair, right? See, so, you know, I'll show you that this is what irritates me when I do this lasso thing. 
see all these these missed spots here in the corners I didn't take my time so now I got to come through and uh, re-ensure that I get them but there is no wrong way to color you just find your own path and you do it um, all right I just this is how I do it I just um, go along the side I know needs to be darkened I brush it out and I'll sh and you'll uh, understand why I just do it like this instead of uh, doing the lasso tool um, when you come through the lighter brush you get to sharpen that darker edge uh, naturally just by having a lighter color so it's quicker for me um, it doesn't really give it more of a natural look but uh, it gives it a Definitely a uh, defined style there. See, this is some crazy hair, too. Most of the time, you don't find hair with all these lines in it. Um, even in more detailed uh, comic book drawings uh, they tend to keep the hair very simple uh, but I like trying to pull off an anime look with the hair uh, just a minor one you know just because if you do it too much then you'll get people who look like uh, Yu-Gi-Oh or Dragon Ball Z or something and and uh, it's really harsh on the eyes when you've got a realistic face with this wild uh, anime hair but um, yeah Color in the hair. All right, and you see where the color from the hair over lines the face there. We uh, will erase that as soon as we're done doing all our shading and highlights. And um, yeah, notice I'm not blending it because we were on a different layer, and the layer set to multiply, so it's not um, it's not reacting the same way, way it would if it was on the same layer as the base color because we're not on the same layer with the base color. And uh, the good thing about this, and I'll show you, is the opacity, right? You turn it down, your shadows get lighter and lighter, and turn it up, you adjust it to how you want. But um, I never do that. I, I used to a lot, but I never do that anymore. Um, it's always nice when you don't have to adjust your layer to match what you're trying to go for, because it means that you're getting the coloring job done right the first time. And it, it takes a while to get to that point. Um, I hardly adjust my colors anymore as far as tones or anything because uh, I can eyeball it most of the time now. And it took me three, four years to get to that point. Um, you just don't wake up one day and do this. It takes a lot of practice. Um, it takes a lot of aggravation. Um, best tips I can hand out to you guys for coloring is to look on the internet for line work of your favorite artists like uh, your pencilist and your inkists and um, you know and then uh, see see how they did it um, and uh, if they don't have a tutorial video you know you just analyze the drawing and uh, and see what you can uh, pull from it and try to mimic it um, you know some of the best ways to learn how to draw are to trace because you you don't know it but you're picking up all these methods and these styles while you're tracing it's not a bad thing there's nothing uh, dishonorable about it um as long as you don't hand it off as your own work you just uh um it's a great learning practice um but at the same time you want to hone in your skills with not having to rely on tracing so that's where the life drawing comes in and uh it, you know um it's always important to carry a sketchbook with you everywhere and sketch everything you see. If you have free time on the bus to work, uh, you sketch. You know, if you're sitting uh, at the DMV, you sketch. You just oh wait, okay. So see, I already made the mistake because I'm on that layer. All right, so that's the um, uh, sorry, the multiplied layer, right? They're just the shadows. Since I already did that, I'm going to go ahead and make another layer for my highlights. I'm not going to put any filters on it. Uh, if you do want to try this, some people put the screen filter on it. And I'll show you what that does. Okay, screening. I've got a lighter the color of the hair selected, and it really brings it out really quick. Okay, and I guess I can try that out for a while. But um, yeah, I 
never use those layer filters unless I'm doing um, final, uh, like a photo filter or something on it. Bring in the same tone across all the colors. All right, and this is how I, I highlight. I just go through with my brush and lightly hit the edges. And um, see, and that, and to me, that's a, that's too bright. And that's why I hate doing the screening thing is because you can't, you don't really have a sense of control over it. Um, that was, what am I doing? I'm going to go the other way with the color. All right, let's show that one. Um, experiment with using different colors to do highlights and shadows. Like I was saying, like that purple uh, to do shadows. Uh, you can do highlights with uh, greens and yellows. Um, I try to leave yellow out as much as possible in the shading and highlighting process because when I do a, um, when I over filter of like a brown and an orange to kind of bring in the tones a little bit, and uh, it really affects it, and it's not in the positive way. It makes it too bright. So, I'm probably going to merge these layers here in a minute because uh, I don't like having them. I don't like having tones and the highlights off the same layer because you can't blend them with your base color. Now, if you want to do like uh, some artists do this to put your opacity up to 50 and you can do these little like pencil line wisps through there. Um, I don't do that too often, but uh, there's sometimes you see it. All right, we're almost done with the highlights on this, and I'll show you a really cool trick because I don't like this color already. It looks really muddy. Uh, it looks too brown. Um, I, want, I wanted a borderline blonde white hair for this character to where it was almost kind of like a tinted snow. Um, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, now, like we did on the face, you're, you're going to want to go through with your um, your harder brush, right? And uh, I'm going to get my purple out because I don't like that brown. Get the purple out and go through across your edges. Oh, we're on the screening filter. It's messed up my whole jam. Okay, go to your shadows. And just uh, darken the areas that need to be darkened. And this will give it more of a sense of depth that the purple does. Never use black, remember. Remember one of those golden rules, never use black to do shadowing. Unless you're Batman, because Batman likes black. Okay. It just gives it a sharper feel. Uh, one of these videos I'll have to slow down and uh, show you how to refine all the blending. But this is just kind of like a entry level, you know, just get you comfortable and on the right path to uh, doing it properly. Because I see a lot of uh, colorists who are new and um, uh, contrast and tones are way off. And uh, like I said before, it, um, it really destroys a comic. And, uh, you know, you, you can't really blame people for trying, but um, I believe that if you know how to do something right, you should share it with everybody because, I mean, there's no point in uh, holding all this information to yourself. It's it's evil, you know? You're like the, the 
corporation that doesn't want anybody else to succeed or something and it's just uh it's not good so all right um let's get this side done real quick and i'll show you that cool trick with the hue and saturation just do quick swipes here and there i'm going to do this just real quick and just fill all this in. Some underlying shadows. This is my worst coloring job on hair I think I've done in a while, but it makes my point. All right, so there's our hair, right? And it's despicable. Oh my god. Okay, so what we're gonna do is uh, make sure you're on the layer that you want to adjust here. Okay, that's our. Uh, well, first I'm going to merge this down, the light and the shadow onto the um, uh, that bottom gradient layer. Okay, so uh, merge down. That merged the highlights onto the shadows. Okay, and merged it down onto the gradient layer, and there we go. That's that's all of our hair on one layer. Okay, so you're gonna go to image, just, and then this is the control U. Okay, this is hue and saturation, right? All right, this is awesome. It's too vibrant for me, so I'm gonna bring down the contrast a little bit, right? I'm gonna bring up the lightness just a little bit, but not too much because then we'll lose the um, the purple hue. Right, and then we're going to adjust the hue over to right about there. I might be too close to the flesh tone, so let's go in the opposite direction. I want to go in green, but you can change this everywhere. You see that? All right, you can color something, and you're like, oh, I don't like that color, and just switch it over. If you want it more vibrant, look at that. That's neon Japan pop right there. It gives me an idea, though. Blue hair. Blue hair is always nice for... Um, characters for like these look at that yeah line it up a little bit bam that's pretty cool i'm not gonna go with that though because i wanted um more of a natural blonde and you can do the saturation all the way down to black and white you can make it neon japan uh the lightness you bring it all down to black make it all the way white um and then you got the full color spectrum on the uh, hue, and then you can hit this button down here called Colorize, and it will colorize it for you. Um, never use that though, I don't, so. Okay, what was I doing? Yeah, right, uh, saturation, switch that, lighten it up a little bit. Uh, don't want it, don't want it too, see, I don't got enough white highlights in that now because I didn't stick to my routine. I went and did those different layers. Um, that's all right, we'll do that. And then in this image adjust uh, drop down window here, okay? These are all kinds of adjusting filters for your colors. So I'm not getting enough uh, shadows or lightness in there, right? So I'm going to go to the, um, where is it, the, uh, not the color balance, but the, <sighs> brightness contrast, there it is, okay. We brighten it up, right? And then we bring our contrast down. Where is it up? Nope, I do this backwards here. Brighten it, contrast. I mean, kind of bring out those colors just a little bit, not too much though. See, that's good, I like that color. That's a good color. All right, see, there we go, all right. Bam, and now we get our eraser out the most tedious part of the whole coloring process because you don't want to you don't want to eliminate what you got put down so you just go to that edge always erase with 100 percent hardness um or else yeah i already messed up or else you'll uh, get this fuzzy feel around your erase marks and uh sometimes you can't even see it and it messes up when you go to do hue filters or um tone filter so uh, shabam she's got air all right 
Now, if you have a light color and you can't really see what you're um, what you're erasing, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to color burn, right? Look at that. See what I'm talking about? You get to see your color in a different uh, tone, and you'll be able to identify the uh, spots that you've missed. Did you go back to normal? Okay. All right. That is good for that color. For me, I would probably do a little bit more highlights and shading on that, but we're going to move on to the, um, let's move on to the bandana, I suppose. Let's take off the, there we go. We're going to come in here with the red and make this bigger. And we're going to, well, we're going to make sure we turn the opacity all the way to 100. Make sure we get all that bandana. All right. Get rid of all the bandana. Select it with the magic wand. And then we're going to put these things back up. <clears throat> Excuse me. A uh, new layer. Gradient tool. It's just lather, rinse, and repeat. All right, darker color. Now, this is actually supposed to be green, right? Because I wanted the bandana to be green. So we're going to do our gradient on our new layer. Okay, let's get it dark to where you want it. That's good. Go to image, adjust, hue and saturation. And we're going to slide this over to green. Let's see, that's uh, this is probably teal green looks good. I like that, right? Look at that. Then you have to switch colors. Looks beautiful. All right, so uh, purple for shading. I've actually got my purple swatch down here. My, yeah, right here. There we go, paintbrush. Opacity down to 30. And this all over again. Dark where we need it. I'll have to do a video covering texturing because um, a lot of people find texturing to be challenging. I don't do a lot of texturing, but um, it's definitely a skill that you want to pick up when you're doing uh, scenery, uh, backgrounds, buildings, um, all kinds of crazy things like that. Never really do a lot of texturing on my characters because it makes them look abnormal if you only do it here and there. And um, I am doing that with a hard brush. I keep forgetting. Excuse me. Amateur hour over here. Just want to smooth this all out. Tiny little circles. That's good. All right. So we got all that. We do a hard brush. Make sure it's a good size. Go up to 50. Uh, get your purple. I don't need it. Do that. And you put on your your purple, and then do your shadowing. And you can see, especially on the screen, where the purple looks good. You know, um, like we were talking about the color wheel earlier. Um, it's very important to uh, keep to that because you'll you'll get a feel for what colors go with which colors. Uh, you won't feel so uh, lost when you're. Um, doing your designs and stuff. I did the dark shadows a little too heavy, so we're going to have to kind of smooth those out a little bit. Like that. All right, time for the lightness. Like you'll, you see here how I don't mess with the filters. Um, you just you pick up on how to do this without using all those cheating tools and they're not really cheating tools but um i find them to be a little bit time wasting because you're always having to go through filters and uh, figure out which one looks the best when if you can just do it with your eyes and your methods it's better it's way better Alright, now we're gonna brush that out a little bit. Well, the wrong one. Oh, 
I spend most of my time blending it, all right? Um, that's where most of my time gets set when coloring, making sure it doesn't look like you just threw a bunch of colors down without trying to make them flow together. Um, okay, so that that's good for me right now. Um, it's a little too dark, so image adjustments, hue and saturation. We're going to saturate it. Uh, don't lighten it if you can help it, because when you lighten it, you lose tones. All right? You lose your light tones and your dark tones, and, and it's, um, sat saturate it, lighten it. That's good. All right. So what we got to do now is we've got to hand up or pull out the handy dandy eraser here and erase over the parts we've already colored. Like I normally color one layer, right? So all of that color uh, would be gone around the uh, base already. But um, it's not a big deal. You just go through each layer, trim it up a little bit. Um, you know, it's it's still the same process. So, all right. Next, we're gonna do some headphones. 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 Uh, I am. Let's see. We've got. Blonde and green on the head already. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go with purple for the headphones. A light purple like a, a pastel. All right. So we're going to let's select the blue, go to your color palette, click on the purple. There we go. Um opacity, I will be hundred. Color in the purple with a hard brush. Now it's not showing up over that bandana because I've got it um, still got it highlighted. So let's make sure we take that off. There we go. Okay, select it. Select the layer over all the things we've already colored, right? And then brand new layer, gradient tool. Let's darken that purple. Gradient tool. Bam. Actually, let's do it this way. Okay, that's our purple. Now we're gonna start coloring. Now, these are headphones, so they're not just gonna be this purple, right? We're gonna go through with different colors. And um, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna shade them differently. And something happened to my line work there, messed it up a bit. So if there's something wrong with your line work, find your line work layer. Get your brush out with the uh, black, get a hard brush, and shrink it down to probably about five, six pixels. And we can just fix this real quick. Look at that, it's like magic. See? Uh, see, now I'm getting nitpicky, but there we go, that's good. Uh, probably erase this other line here. If you don't belong, you get out. Okay. All right, that's good. Now we need to find our purple. There we go. So that's purple. We're gonna shade with um shade with a green, okay? Dark green. Because shading with purple on a purple, you don't really get the same effect as you would if it was a different color. Um, let me see if I've got questions popping up. I might, I'm not paying attention here. Sorry guys. Um, nope, looks like we're good. Awesome. Okay, so back to the drawing here. We are going to shade this with the green. Um, what am I doing wrong here? OK. 
Come on. Got my brush. Got my color. It's not coming out as dark as I want it to. What's going on? Oh, my flow. Hit the flow on accident, I think. Or not. Hold on, guys. This should be. Uh oh, what did I do? See, it's times like this in Photoshop where you're just blank because you can't figure out what you did. And let's see if we can get a different reaction here. See, we're just pulling in a color. So we did something to our brush here. We gotta figure this out. So normal. We're on normal here. We're on normal there. Maybe it's the brush itself. Let's change brushes. No. Let's create a new layer. No. 